Hey, it's Chaz. Welcome back to the Local SEO Course 2.0. Uh, we're knocking out some research videos. This video, we're going to talk about the semantic core. Um, so, I want to. I don't want to confuse anybody. If you see the, the itinerary here, we have the semantic core video, and then we're going to have a local keyword research video. Th there is a difference. Um, the semantic core is really designed to help me identify my my pages on my website what do they rank for my local keyword research is what i want my gmb listing to rank for and there's a difference there there is a difference um so my look so if i did a, a semantic core for my location page right let's say we do a semantic core for a location page that's attached to the gmb listing that location page probably isn't going to contain all the keywords that we want our GMB listing to rank for. It's going to be missing some. It's probably going to be missing service-specific keywords, uh, locally locally relevant service-specific keywords, because inner pages sometimes rank other than the location page. So when you encounter that, you know, this local research, uh, this second video helps account for some of that. Okay, so I wanted to kind of clarify why there's going to be two different videos. So the semantic core is primarily to do with the website. Um, it does help us find base keywords for maps, but we then have to include additional stuff for the map. So how do we get our semantic core and how do we know which pages should rank for what? Well, we started that in our last video using our hrefs where we went in. Oops, and it completely logged me out. We went into hrefs. Uh, let me get back here. So in hrefs, I had to reload that. Um, under organic keywords, just showing everything the site ranks for, all the pages, we start by identifying the pages that are already ranking, and we start breaking those out. Um, you show, you, I showed you how I uh, removed the branded term and then download that. So this would be a list, and this is basically where I start building a semantic core. I'm going to move myself over in here a little bit. Hi, there I am. So here's a page, right? These are all different pages. So here's a page, right? Basically, I'm going to go gather all my pages that currently have some keywords, unique ones. I'm only looking at all the different pages. I don't want to get all, you know, the same URLs. I want to get a list of all these different pages that are ranking, right? I get a list of them. So that's in, I already have that, I already have, here's one, right? So I would get a list of all these ranking pages. I'd go down through here, make my list. And if it's a big site, it's a big site. And if it's a big site, you might not do all of them on the first quarter, right? Or when you first set it up, you might do uh, your, your top priority pages, uh, your location page, you know, some of your top location pages, some of your top service pages. You might not do all of them, depending on the size of the site. And you can come back throughout your campaign and continue to build on this and continue to build this out. Um, but basically, you get your list of URLs that you want to target, and you know what target you know what URLs you want to target by what Google's already ranking, right? They're already ranking well, um, and you're going to put them in a workbook. Let me move my screen here. Now I have to readjust for you. There we go. So you want to put them in a workbook page by page, every page, every every tab here is a page of the URL, right? If that makes sense, right? Let me just minimize this. So every one of these pages, unique URLs, is, is already been broken out in this workbook. All right, let me give, give you an example. So this URL, right? This URL here, Google Maps SEO, once I have it broken out, I want to know the keywords this page specifically ranks for. So let's use this as an example. I'm going to throw it in here. I'm going to go exact URL. I'm going to get a list of keywords this thing already ranks for. Um, and unfortunately, this is, there we go. I had to refresh it. It was pulling the, it was pulling the home page there. This is, here it is. Here's our URL specific all the keywords this thing's ranking for right now that i know that this is my bucket for this page right i have i have a little bit of decent search volume here but if i if i start building links or optimizing the site without knowing 
which page Google wants to rank already. Like this is a good page to target, but it would be easy for me to accidentally optimize other pages for some of these keywords if I didn't have a semantic core already built. Like example, I have some similar pages. I have this Google My Business ranking, which is its own keyword bucket versus Google Maps SEO. There is a difference. Um, the keywords are different. Um, and if I tried to, and I would dedupe by the way, sometimes there are some cross and you try to split them up, but the keyword buckets tend to be different. And what I want to do then, well, let, don't let me get ahead of myself. I break all these URLs out, first of all, right? I would break all my URLs out. Here's one. How much does local SEO cost, right? This is the URL. I don't need any of this. This is all just extra data at this point, right? What I want to do is basically, this is my list of all the different keywords that right now that page is ranking for, right? Is it a final list? No, but it's my starting list. And I want to get these lists. And you can see in my tab here, I have all, I have a lot of pages. You didn't have to start with this many. If it's a small client, you start with their location page and a couple of service pages. And that's what you do, right? And maybe a couple of their high traffic blogs that if, if they already have some rankings there, maybe those two, right? Um, and you, you start breaking them out and you start so this one's pretty well sorted. Um, let, let me show you the SOP. So ID pages, create your keyword bucket, specifically exact URL shows what they're ranking for. Then you have to go in and sort them, right? You do have, there is some sorting in here and I sorted most of the home page already. So there's some pages I haven't started sorting yet. Like these two haven't been sorted. That's why if you look, there might be a little bit of overlap between the keywords when I'm done sorting them there really won't be much overlap at all. But here's, I have one highlight in yellow. And I think other than this, the rest of the homepage has been pretty well sorted. Um, actually, there's a couple highlight in yellow. But so example, franchise marketing system reviews. You can see the homepage is getting a little bit of visibility for this. Not that it's a high volume keyword, a high value keyword, but it's still a keyword that I want to make sure the right page is getting it. And I think I have a better page on my site. So I do have to manually sort some of these. If, if one of your pages, uh, isn't quite right with what you think, but don't, don't go too against Google here, right? You don't want to, uh, you don't want to say, no, Google, you're wrong. I don't want this. Like you can see like, okay, it, let's say I had a different page that I think should have been creative agency or something, right? I don't want to go against Google if Google's telling me this page is ranking for that, right? I, a lot of different variations, but if it's just one variation and there's a much better page than that, then that's when you make your manual adjustments. So in my case, I do think for franchise terms, I have a better page for franchise. It's already getting decent visibility for a lot of franchise terms. I would just go ahead and put it over here, that term. <clears throat> and then I always like to sort my data by, um, by the biggest volume, but I would put it over where it belongs, right? So I do, you do have, there is some manual uh, development needed here. Uh, great, great use of a, a VA to help you with this. Um, so what about something like this SEO? I have several pages on my site. That's probably a little bit more for SEO than the home page. Uh, so these are SEOs. And I think in these cases, I probably would also move them into a more SEO page. Uh, like I have a local search page, which a lot more relevant for SEO, even though it's local SEO, it's a lot more relevant for that. And I think I, I could probably rank those SEO ones in that inner page rather than taking my home page for that. My home page is more going to be, uh, local marketing, digital marketing, uh, local branding, uh, marketing firms, that, that keyword bucket, right? Whereas SEO is going to be its own page there, there will be a little bit of crossover because I do have to mention SEO several times on a digital marketing page because it's one of the services of a digital marketing agency. So you would be expected to be on there. So you will have a little bit of relevancy there, but it's not something that I would like specifically target. Um, 
on this page. So I would probably move these, but they're so low. I, I'm not really going to worry about them too much, but I would sort these. And example here, Google Maps SEO, Google My Business Ranking. Um, so I would look at GMB. How many terms is GMB on this page? So really, this is all Google My Business other than one I see GMB optimization service. So <clears throat> there is gonna be a lot of crossover between these. So this would be a little bit more figuring out, you know, how do I get the, the separate uh, keyword buckets on this one? Um, this is getting a lot more visibility for things like rank checking. I could probably boost a bunch of that stuff easily. Um, but it's more about ranking. Uh, a lot of this is more about ranking. Now, this is a, this is a, a different one. I would want to see which one. So this one actually is lost. Um, Google Maps SEO, um, Google My Business Ranking GMB SEO, right? This, this one's going to be a, a tough one. I'm not exactly sure. I'll have to come and do a little an, a, more analysis on this, but I would have to go through and manually sort and filter these pages then. Um, same thing with how much does SEO cost? If there's some things in here that would probably be like here, multi-location marketing agency. That's either going to be my home page or it's going to be my franchise page. My franchise page is getting a lot of, uh, a, a lot of relevancy for, whoops, and here's my URL there. Um, I don't know why it was way down here. There we go. Like multiple locations, like it's in the URL. So this one's really, uh, this page is really uh, topically about multi-location franchises. So something like this would have to be sorted out there. I don't want to optimize how much does my, how much does my local SEO cost page for something about like multi-location agency or marketing, because then I can start getting keyword cannibalization happening. So this helps remove the, the possibility of keyword cannibalization. It doesn't always, you're never going to completely absolve yourself of keyword cannibalization, but it does help having something like this, but then you have to go back and manually sort them. Uh, we're, we're about 12 minutes right now. We have a little bit more to cover on this one, then we'll end it. Again, I did not sort all these pages. Some of these are, I think this one's pretty sorted. GMB locations, that might be a different one, but still talking about multiple locations, I think that makes sense. Um, but you can start seeing how effective this is going to be once it's all sorted. And I'll get it sorted and we'll come back through because we're going to be using this throughout our campaign. Um, you know, you can see I started sorting a whole bunch of this. Like we have bail bond pages where it's, uh, you know, sorted out or all of our keywords for that. Why did we do this? Right now, I'll show you my location page in a second as well. But why do we do this, right? Why do we want to take the time to do this in a campaign? for the website in a local campaign well if you've ever if you've done local then you know that there's just a whole lot of potential for keyword canvasation especially when you get to local optimized service pages which we're going to have with this website um and whenever you have like a lot of pages uh that talk about similar topics it's good to understand what keyword buckets go with which pages. And you saw a great example in that where it was the uh, the GMB SEO page versus the Google business ranking. There's a different, there's difference. And the SERPs are different for them as well, which is, that's important to understand, right? We're basically figuring out which pages should be optimized for which SERPs. And when we talk about SERPs, we're talking about the whole keyword bucket of SERPs. So all these SERPs, which page should be, targeting all these SERPs, right? In our case, in this, particular, in this particular example, it's our bail bonds marketing SEO page, right? Um, this is the page that's going to be relevant for all of these. And at some point, if I silo another page under here, like, so for bail bonds marketing, we're having great results using Bing ads right now. And we're getting like calls for our clients that are like 10 to $15 a call per call for bail bonds, like crushing it in, in Bing. Um, like bail bonds advertising is probably going to get its own sub page because it's going to rank so much better. Um, 
by its standalone page, where then this page will then just be about marketing and SEO. Then we'll have one just about bail bonds, PPC and advertising, right? And we'll, we'll, we will be able to separate them in the future. But for now, I still want to know, like, I don't want to be sending an anchor text or an internal link that talks about bail bond advertising to my PPC page, right? I do have one in here somewhere. I don't want to do that when I have a page already about bail bonds that's already getting exposure, right? So example, bail bond SEO. I would not want to send an anchor text link to my local SEO page when I have a bail bond SEO page. I'm going to create keyword canvasation if I do it. My semantic core helps me know not only me, but my team and anybody else I'm working that's working on these campaigns, my assistants. It gives them a roadmap. Which keywords go with which pages on that website? It solves a ton of your problems if you do this early on, especially before you get a big website and you didn't do this before. Then there's a lot of like sorting and filtering. So much better start a campaign with a good semantic core. I'll show you some of my city pages here. So in our campaign, we're going to be targeting locally. So nationally, we're targeting a whole bunch. I just showed you a whole bunch of national stuff we're doing, which is separate. But locally, we're going to be targeting three distinct uh, areas or, or three distinct SERPs locally. We're going to be targeting SEO SERPs. We're going to be targeting digital marketing SERPs. And we're going to be targeting web des website design SERPs. And typically, they're different SERPs with different pages and different companies ranking in them. That's why we're having different service pages. And we're going to locally optimize them. I'll show you all that fun stuff. But my main one that's going to be connected to my GMB listing is this digital marketing one because it's my main umbrella. I could choose SEO. I could choose website design. But whatever I choose there is going to kind of be what my primary is going to be. That primary keyword bucket that really is going to be my number one uh, goal. And in my case, I'm choosing digital marketing. Um, I don't want to choose SEO. I think maybe the search volume might be a little higher for local SEO, like Pittsburgh SEO, but I think it's a lot of SEOs checking their own volume, right? I think it's a lot of SEOs doing those checks. I don't think a lot of good leads come from that. I think digital marketing or website design probably gives you better local leads just from what I experienced from my agency experiences in the past. Um, so I'm going to connect this to my GMB listing. It's also kind of that top level and I'll be able to silo my other, again, website design is part of digital marketing. SEO is part of digital marketing, right? So I'll be able to silo all those underneath my digital marketing page and that's why I chose this. But having this semantic core really helps you understand that so much better. And when I start doing things like internal linking, anchor text selection for my pages, and even my H tags, this semantic core is golden on all those things all those things it's golden um I'll, I'll talk about really briefly like my h tags right knowing what your primary keywords are going to be right and then putting them in different h tags now, now i only document the title which is not H, but and then h1 h2 h3 i'm going to have probably several h2s i'm going to have several h3s i'll have a couple h4s etc and i'm literally going to use I'm not going to use, like example, one of my big ones here is going to be a uh, Pittsburgh Di Digital Marketing Agency or Digital Marketing Agency Pittsburgh, right? I'm only going to use that a couple times. I'm going to be using so many different variations down through my H tags here. I'm literally going to go down and grab this one. I'll grab this one. I'll use this one. I'll use this all down through my page, not only in H tags, but other important places like bolded and uh, bullet points, unordered lists, right? And it makes you rank so tremendously well when you do this stuff. When you use the semantic core strategically in your campaign, it makes you rank so much better. I do, I do this with all my campaigns, all my clients. And after I optimize a page like this, it just goes up for a huge number of keywords and buckets. I mean, it, it's a tremendous difference. But most SEO companies are only thinking about three or four different keywords that they're going to try to get you. And then they are, they get stuck making just variations of all those. And you tend not to get the best visibility or exposure when you have a list like this that you work with on a page, right? And again, my, my other location pages are going to have smaller lists because they're smaller cities. But my big ones, I'm going to crush them. And I'm going to get gain so much visibility by this, right? 
I'm going to eventually, you're going to see this workbook in my next video. Um, in my next video, you're going to see this workbook and you're going to see why, um, uh, you're going to see in, in practice that it makes so much, uh, just your campaigns work so much better when you do this. Um, and we're going to tie all this further into a much bigger local SEO campaign. So this is actually my workbook I use at Web20 Ranker, by the way, for our GMB campaigns, right? You want to see our keyword. And we ask, we, we ask our clients say, Hey, give us our top five keywords you want to target. And then we go and we literally do this for every one of our campaigns. We do our location page semantic core and we take that and we identify the base keywords that we're going to target. And then we have this formula in here that literally creates every variation of literally state, state plus city, st uh, or city, city plus state, city plus full state, city plus near, or keyword plus near me, every variation, every which way. And once we have this huge, huge mass, it's a huge massive list, right? Then we're going to run that and we're going to run it by volume. This is where we get our key, our local list. This is our local keyword list for maps. This is where we, we run it by volume and, uh, we basically put it in here by volume. Then we go in and start sorting it and we get this sorted list and that becomes our actual keywords that we run our campaigns on, right? When you do it like this, right? Can you see, whoops, let me just, let me just kind of slow it down here a little bit when I'm, whoops, let me just get, scroll it down this way. It's not just five keywords or 20 keywords that we're, we're working with in these campaigns. It's 50, 40, 50 keywords, variations of them. Look at it. And these are search volume of these things, right? All these teeny little key. And when you start optimizing your location page and you start creating focused content around all this stuff and internal and linking and off page signals about these anchor text, right? You're never struggling with just like five different variations. You have so many different variations. You get so much visibility in your campaigns when you do something like this. Next video, we're going to go into how to do this exactly, this local keyword strategies. But let me know if you have any questions about creating semantic cores for your sites. I think it's something that uh, not enough people are doing. And it shows, right? It shows when you see all those keyword canalizing pages and they don't know which anchors should be built to which pages or where their internal linking should go. This makes it so much easier, makes it so much easier to say, hey, what should my H tag be? Well, let's, let's see what our H tag on this one should be, right? Let's, let's see. Maybe, maybe this makes sense here. We'll, we'll something internet marketing near me or nearby. Usually I usually tr change that to nearby when I'm doing local or maybe this one should be, Pittsburgh advertising agency, right? Whatever. It just so many. Yeah. And you can just roll down here with maybe this one should be, uh, this H tag should be online marketing Pittsburgh, right? And when you do that in your page, you, you expand your visibility so much beyond what most people are doing. And right here gives you a competitive advantage. So I'm Chaz. Thanks for watching. If you have, have any questions about how to do semantic cores, why you should do semantic cores or how they make your life as an SEO so much easier, definitely hit us up. I will say, I will close that. There's always going to be outliers. Um, every site's a little different. So if you have a site that has no rankings, you start it a little bit differently, but don't let it stop you. Get this done, right? Even, and it, and, and my keyword list might be a little different than your keyword list, depending on what priorities are. And there's no right or wrong way on some of this, but the wrong thing is not to do any of it, not to have any strategy. This is a strategy that works really amazing for me and if I share it with you, hopefully you see the same results for yourself too. So thanks for watching.